The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, I'm here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Please do like and subscribe. If you do actually like these, uh, this channel, it does help us uh, get up the Google rankings and uh, YouTube rankings. Um, we're going to talk about coronavirus and the effects of coronavirus in on the mortgage industry and, and the mortgage sector itself uh, and some of the small sort of changes that I've seen already. Um, obviously, it's all doom and gloom when you put in the, the news on and, and, and there are some uh, big concerns out there in, in the world at the moment and I'm certainly not an economist, um, but it sort of takes me back to the time that we had the crash. Um, I remember at the, at the time we had the crash, I worked for one of the largest mortgage distributors. I was a marketing director for a company called Mortgage Times Group and, uh, and we had a, you know, about 3,000 brokers as appointed representatives or associates uh, associated to the company. And we had about three, four hundred staff uh, at a time. And when the crash happened in 2007, you know, at, at, at the start, everybody thought, oh, well, it's going to blow over. You know, it's not a big deal. And yes, lenders are just sort of, you know, trying to make margins and trying to cut them, cut the brokers out as such. And, and we didn't really quite understand the the impact of the whole thing. Um, and it only take, took a few few weeks, really. For us to realise, oh my God, this is this is actually going to be a, a big problem, and and it's, you know we were in the eye of the storm because we were in the mortgage industry, uh, and the problems were fundamentally with mortgages historically, not necessarily in the UK, but certainly abroad. Um, so I remember those sort of messages coming out of the lenders, the reassurance that you had from the from the finance community that everything is going to be fine. You know, they were they had the they had their systems in processes in place, and they had. Had, um, the various sort of um, structures to be able to deal with shocks in the system and what happened a lot of them just went pop and they no longer lent so uh, what you found out was um, a lot of those so-called bank or lenders were actually their masters were actually not here they were, they were all abroad and you know some of them literally with a phone call they had to sort of fold their operations shut the shop and and that's it you know so um and and, and although things have changed although there is there has been a lot more um work to be done to make financial institutions more secure i think there's still a lot big problem uh within certainly within the lenders that securitize and 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 don't have their own balance sheets um, so that tends to be the smaller lenders that go to the money markets uh, and try to source uh, funding channels. So I think that we're going to see a um, big problem um, in the next few few months as, as the money markets start tightening up um, and, and funding lines start drying up. You're going to see lenders pulling products. And we've already seen that yesterday. We saw two lenders, um, one of them Saffron Building Society, withdraw their entire buy-to-let product range. Um, we also have seen uh, another lender, a specialist lender, Vida Home Loans, they withdrew their buy-to-let products. Now we don't know whether that's just a repricing or whether they've actually withdrawn the products um, you know, indefinitely or, or for, for some time. And we've also seen other lenders where they have been um, coming in with very keenly priced buy-to-let products at the moment, um, we've seen them start withdrawing those types of products so there has been a shift and change already in the market and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is this is very soon it's you know we're, it's early early days yet um, on the residential side of things I think we should be okay because a lot of the lenders here have got very strong balance sheets so I think that side of the market will will remain you know pretty strong I think the specialist sector at the buy to let sector specifically um, there, there's some trouble ahead um, and that's why I'm not an economist and I'm certainly not a someone who, who deals with the money side of things um, I just deal with mortgages and clients and obviously I've got the hindsight of um, working in the industry in the eye of the storm in the back back when there was a crash when there were similar messages coming out and it just takes us back and those of us that have been within that um, within the industry um, uh, will draw parallels I was just speaking to one of the, my, my lender uh, contacts and, and she was mentioning that some of the things Things that you know they had to go through at the time um, there is gonna be opportunities though I mean I've had a number of calls from clients saying look Pine, what do you think you know what's, what's gonna happen what happens if my tenants stop paying rent and what happens you know with mortgages so let's run through some of those issues that you may have practically from a mortgage perspective one um, if you start getting into trouble in terms of non-payers of if you've got buy-to-let properties your tenants are not uh, paying rent 
um, you need to contact the lender. Um, I think lenders will be um, flexible around this this sort of stuff. I think they have to be, uh, and I think they would want to be seen to be flexible as well. So, but what you want to do is not try to resolve it all yourself. Not try to you know speak to the lender, see what they can do for you, see if there's any payment holidays they can do, see if they can turn it if it's a repayment maybe into an interest only. See if there's how how that will impact your credit profile, for example. Um, so you want to um, make sure you cover your basis. So if there's a problem. With, with an existing mortgage, the first thing you should do is contact your existing lender and say, look, there's a possible problem here. Um, I wanted to keep you informed. What can we do about this? Um, what, are, what are my options? Okay, so do not let things get worse. Okay, in terms of those of you that have got <coughs> policies, insurance policies in place, you know, um, in pay, payment protection policies or um, uh, work employment policies in place where you can in terms of redundancies and so forth look into those get get in touch with the insurers <coughs> um, in terms of um, in terms of how we deal with this things going forward I've had a number of clients funny enough that were looking to do either buy to let mortgages or let to buys looking equity take taking equity out to further invest in properties whether right to lets or residentials they've sort of turned around and said well I'm not sure I'm going to put things on hold for a little while until until we know what happens and I think that's a that's a good uh, solution for some people that's going to be the right way to go about things because they say look I'm not quite sure you know I might be working in a sector that's been uh, heavily hit uh, and I just want to sort of make sure that I'm okay before I look to invest but then I've got lots of clients whether it's residential or buy to let, they say all systems go. Yes, we want to carry on, get the mortgage. We want to buy. We see an opportunity. We can see some potential uh, properties freeing up here. As people look to sort of consolidate and, and, and sort of retreat, we want to come into the market. And this is an opportunity for us to get pick up some deals. So you have got some people that are sitting on cash or they've got uh, lowly, low geared portfolios that are looking to refinance to get into the market. Um, and obviously there's, there's, there's famous people that say, you know, when everybody's selling, you're looking to buy. And, and, and those people, and if you're in that opportunity now, if you've got that opportunity, um, and, I, and I ha I'll be honest with you, I mean, we, we were in the last two days, we've been really, really busy. And, and I don't think that's gonna continue. I think that we're gonna, you know, as a business, like all businesses, I think we're gonna go through a, a quiet period. We're gonna go through, as people look and reflect on what they're doing, uh, I think that's naturally gonna, affect all types of businesses but I think in short term people are looking at their financing options to try to get themselves a strategy and I think that's quite good look at your spreadsheets look at your bank statements look at what you can do in terms of whether if you've got money on the side, whether you want to put it into property, if not, what are you going to do with investments? Are you going to put it in an instant cash account, for example? All of those things will have a bearing. And that's, that's what I've been doing. That's what the business has been doing. Our business has been doing. We've been looking at all of our uh, costs uh, and seeing what's manageable and what's not manageable and how we can streamline the business. Thankfully, as a business, we are, you know, we work, we can work remotely. All of our uh, phone systems or VoIP, voice over IPs, our databases are all online, our, um, our um, hard drives and so forth, they're all online. So um, it's it's quite easy for us to sort of move things across. But um, I would do that with our personal finances as well. Um, in terms of rates, I think you're going to get um, some lenders actually come into the market with good rates. So I think on the residential front and some of the high street lenders with... Um, with a uh, balance sheet lending, I think they're going to be be around, and I think they'll probably be very strong with their offerings. And like I said, when it looks to the, the buy to let guys, I think they will be quite nervous around this, and because a lot of them uh, tend to, a lot of the specialist guys that have come into the market since there's been the buy to let changes, I think they're going to be quite nervous at the moment, and and, and so should, so they should be. I think there is there is turmoil ahead. You only have to look at the stock market to see what's what's going on over there. Um, as for as for broad Brokers and other businesses, I think um, there's going to be uh, there's going to be huge issues with with uh, you know overheads. If people have been running businesses with huge sort of staff, huge overheads, huge costs, I think that they're going to be a problem. My, my our own business back in 2007, 2008, you know we had huge offices in central London, three four hundred staff, you know a hundred staff on six months notice periods. You know it was it was a huge problem. So everybody should be looking at their finances. 
as well as their business models if you are self-employed to see how you can streamline things uh, and certainly from a mortgage perspective how you can um, you know I've already had a client phone me up and say look I've got I've got a buy to let mortgage two of them are actually on repayments can I put them on an interest only mortgage because I just want to make sure my cash flow is going to be okay for the next you know a year or two um, until this sort of uh, blows over so everyone's looking at the wrong options it's not just about buying toilet rolls you should be looking at your financing options and looking at what you can do longer term and making sure that you, you you're looked after um, uh, long term um, yeah that's about it really I, if, I, I I'm certainly not an economist, but I, I, what I would say is, um, you know, it's going to blow over, but it will take some time. I think it's going to be a, a challenging time for all businesses uh, and, and, and consumers as such. And if you do need any advice, finance advice, mortgage advice, please do get in touch with us. Thank you so much and all the best and stay safe.